Hello, Matt from LeanStacks here. Welcome back to another episode in the LeanStacks Technology Education Series. This episode is part two of a two-part mini-series showing you how to install and run a Spring Boot application on a server. This episode builds on the previous episodes in the Spring Boot Fundamentals and Development Operations series. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch them, I encourage you to take a look on the LeanStacks YouTube channel. The source code illustrated in this episode may be found in the LeanStacks GitHub repositories. See the episode description for more information and URLs. In part one of this mini-series, we learned how to update the Maven and Gradle build scripts to produce fully executable JAR files. In this episode, we will deploy those JAR files to an AWS EC2 instance running the Amazon Linux operating system. Let's get started. As you can see, I have provisioned an EC2 instance, and I'm accessing that instance via SSH. Let's create a user on the server which will own and be used to run the Spring Boot application. It's a best practice to always create a dedicated user on a server when installing an application. Since our application is a RESTful web service API for greetings, let's name the user account Greet API. At the terminal prompt, use the add user command to create the Greet API user. We'll use sudo to temporarily give the EC2 user admin privileges for the add user command. The dash dash home parameter provides the absolute path to the greet API user's home directory. This is where we'll install the application. The dash dash shell parameter provides the name of the login shell. For example, the bash shell. Since the Greet API user is only used to run the application and no one should ever access the server as Greet API, we set the login shell to be the no login. User home directories are created with permissions making them accessible only to that user. In order for system processes to access the application deployed to this directory, we need to change the permissions. Use the chmod command to relax the access permissions on the greeting-api directory. I used scp to copy the fully executable greeting API jar to the server. This is the jar file which we created in part one of this two-part mini-series. If you've not seen part one, find the link in the episode description below. When the application is installed as a Linux service, it's executed by the root user. The executable script embedded within the jar file will start and stop the application service as the owner of the application's jar file. Let's use the chown or chown command to set the owner and group of the jar file to the greet API user. Let's secure the application. First, let's use the chmod command to make the jar file readable and executable by the owner only. That permission level expressed numerically is 500. Second, to prevent anyone or anything from modifying the application jar file in the future, let's set the immutable attribute with the chattr attribute, uh, chattr command. To install the application as a Linux service, we simply need to create a symbolic link to the executable jar file in the etsy initd directory. Let's name the service greeting-api. Navigate to the etsy initd directory and use the ln command with the dash s parameter to create a symbolic link.
Now our Spring Boot application can be started and stopped as a proper Linux service using the service command. Let's start the service. The system displays the PID or process ID for the Greeting API Spring Boot application service. Let me quickly tail the log file so that I, we can monitor the application startup process. By default, the Spring Boot execution script places the log file in the var log directory and the name of the log file is the same as the application jar file. Notice the application has started successfully on port 8080 which is the default configured port for the embedded Apache Tomcat to start. That's great, but our AWS security group only allows inbound HTTP traffic on port 7001. Let's next create an external configuration file to instruct the greeting API application to use port 7001 for HTTP requests. As you know from watching the episodes in the Spring Boot Fundamentals series, the Greeting API application has default configuration values supplied within the application properties file located inside of the JAR file. These values may be overridden and additional property values may be supplied in an external configuration file. It is a development operations best practice to allow applications to be configured outside of the application artifacts themselves. This allows operation staff to promote fully tested application components to production environments without having to recompile or repackage them with environment specific configurations. Spring Boot's property loader automatically satisfies this requirement. It searches for configuration files in multiple locations both inside and outside of the application. Since the configuration files located outside of the application jar are loaded after those inside the jar, they override values from the internal configuration files. As you've just seen, I've created an external configuration file named application.properties in the application home directory on our server. Next, let's change the owner of the application properties file to the greet API user using the chown command. This will allow the greeting API application to load the properties file at startup. Let's further secure this file by making it read only for the greet API user. Use the chmod command to change the permissions to 400. Let's restart the application once again and monitor the application logs to ensure it starts on port 7001. As you can see, the embedded Apache Tomcat server is now listening on port 7001. The application has successfully loaded the external configuration file and applied those values, overriding the default value of port 8080. Let's use the Postman RESTful web service client to test the greeting API application running on our EC2 instance. I've copied the public DNS name of the EC2 instance into the request URL and I'll access a few of the actuator endpoints. As you can see, the application returns a successful response. Notice in the response from the actuator environment endpoint or metrics endpoint that the application has only been allocated approximately 128 megabytes of Java heap. This is probably inadequate for a production deployment. To configure the Spring Boot application service itself, we can use environment variables or a configuration file. 
Let's create a configuration file for the Greeting API application service and specify the value for the Java Ops variable. As many of you probably know, the Java Ops or Java Options variable is commonly used to supply runtime initialization options to the Java Virtual Machine. Once again, navigate to the application home directory and create a new file named greeting-api.conf and add the Java Ops variable. Since our EC2 instance is of size T2 micro, it only has one gigabyte of memory. I'm setting the virtual machine heap size to a minimum and maximum of 640 megabytes, which allows room for the meta space to grow. I'll also enable parallel and verbose garbage collection. Since it's the root user who runs the service, uh, who initiates services in the Linux system, we need to keep the owner and group of the conf file as the root user. However, to prevent unauthorized changes to the conf file, let's use the chmod command to restrict access to the file and make it read-only, similar to the application properties file. Let's restart the greeting API service and see the JVM heap settings take effect. Once again, I'll use the service command to both stop and start the greeting API service. Then I'll tail the application log files to ensure the service starts correctly. After the embedded Apache Tomcat starts, I'll use the Postman, Re Postman RESTful web service client once again to invoke the actuator metrics endpoint so that we can view the change to the initial heap size. See, as you can see, the heap size has now been increased. The value of the initial heap size is 655,360 bytes, which is the equivalent of 640 megabytes. So far, we've deployed the greeting API application to our server, installed it as a Linux service, and supplied both application and service configuration. We want the application to automatically stop when the server shuts down and automatically start when the server boots or is rebooted. On enterprise Linux operating systems like Amazon Linux, the check config command associates the Linux service script with server run levels. To configure automatic restart of the greeting API application service, let's use the check config command. We'll issue the check config command simply with the on parameter, which s installs the greeting API service at all run levels of the server with default options. That's satisfactory for what we wish to do today. This ensures that the greeting API service will be the first application service shut down or one of the very first, and it will be one of the very last services to start. This way all of the other server uh, services like networking and file systems are started and running before our application service is started. Therefore, when we have dependencies upon those file systems and networks, they're available to us when the application service is started. Let's reboot the server and show that the greeting API application is started automatically when the server reboots. As we can see, I've SSH'd back into the server and the application service has been started automatically. I'm tailing the logs once again and you can see that it's running. I'll use the Postman RESTful web service client 
and I can successfully call several of the actuator endpoints. Using Spring Boot as the foundation of your application technology stack not only simplifies application construction, but development operations as well. By creating a fully executable JAR file, it's easy to install and configure a reliable Linux application service. In this two-part mini-series, you've learned how to manually deploy a Spring Boot application to a server. In the coming weeks, LeanStacks will be publishing a series of technology education videos showing you how to automate the deployment of Spring Boot applications from an AWS S3 bucket to a load-balanced auto-scaling group using CloudFormation templates. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Click the thumbs up button below to let us know you liked it. Not a subscriber yet? Click the subscribe button below to get the latest episodes from LeanStacks. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository in this episode, see the GitHub repository URL in this episode's description.